in Taiwan in the middle of ghost month, during which it is believed that the realms between the living and dead are opened. It is said that the hungry ghosts of the deceased rise from the underworld to satisfy their eternal hunger. The airport we arrived at was nearly empty, as all regular travels were banned due to the COVID-19 outbreak, but we were equipped with a very hard to get special entry permit. Our trip to Taiwan started by being locked in a small hotel room for two weeks in a strictly monitored quarantine. This was enough to induce anxiety even without the spirits of the dead roaming on the streets. After 15 days we were worn out but eager to continue with our mission. We took a train to Tainan to meet with the notorious monkey kung fu master Jiang Yushan. We had a festive reunion with the master who had been waiting for us for months. The unexplored secrets of the monkey fish door were once again ahead of us. We were to continue our work of preserving and transmitting the heritage of this ancient art. previous visits, Master Jiang Yushan had given us a hands-on, in-depth tour into the vast world of Qigong. The first course that we created, Health and Fighting Qigong by the Grand Master Jiang Yushan, had laid the foundation for all further learning and development. There are so many different styles of Qigong and Kung Fu. At first sight, they seem scattered, and it's hard to see how they connect. Ba Juan Qing, Yi Jin Qing, Yi Chuan, Shinipa, Tai Chi, and many others. This time we were finally ready to see how everything started to link together, inside and outside. This is, uh, these are the memoirs written by his daughter. This is, is this Wang Chen? Wang Chen, yes. Okay. And this is his clan. This is his daughter. Look, she's also standing. Huh? She do some standings. Of course, she learned something. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the fighting, mm, nobody knows. So here's. Where he learned and also where he where he uh, have the confrontation and where he lost and learned for several years. I have that here. Yeah, because he fought the Shinipa master as well. Yeah, he's traveling around China. He want to know something about Kung Fu. Okay, see here are the main points always, no? So, and until here. Okay, and these memoirs are written by his daughter. 
Yeah. And suppose her daughter was quite close. Yeah, her family. Yeah. And she knows what Baba have done, you know, what what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, this is also very very new for a lot of people, I think. For especially for the martial artists, the westerners, they maybe don't know don't don't have the insight. Yeah, where actually Ichuan derived from and Ichuan actually derived from Shiniba, from Shaolin Shiniba. It, it doesn't mean it must be in the Shaolin temple. No, this kind of Kung Fu also uh, was spread out of China. The Wang Chengzai. Wang Xiangzai. He developed the Ichuan from the knowledge he learned from the Shiniba masters. Uh, one kind of knowledge, I will, I, I will say, because he learned uh, Shiniba uh, for more than three years with one master and he had two. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, he stayed there for a longer term and have a totally insight of this kind of Kung Fu. You also can see his master practicing and what, what, are, what are they emphasizing. And what you can see actually, they're emphasizing on a kind of part is called Fa Jing or Jing Fa this kind of martial abilities. Uh, because in Shiniba, actually in Shiniba, you can actually uh, find all these kind of Bao Fa Jing, explosive power techniques. They even have a slogan in, in Chinese. They say, Tai Chi Shi Nian Bu Zhu Men, Xi Ni Yi Nian Da Si Ren. What is that meaning? Tai Chi Shi Nian Bu Zhu Men. Tai Chi, 10 years, you are not allowed to go out of the door. You do Tai Chi for 10 years. Yeah. Shini Inyen Dasheren. Shini, in einem Jahr Shini, you can kill someone. Okay, you can kill somebody. Dasheren means killing. Killing killing someone. Shini Inyen, one year Dasheren. And this is the old slogan, and this has already his purpose, I think. So actually, when you want to learn much more about Jingfa, you need to learn and investigate Shiniba and Taiji. So Taiji Jing and Shini, uh, Shini Jing, we will say that they are maybe very close related. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only difference is that in Shini you have another method with uh, which called Sa Fang. The Sa Fang method is higher than the Fa Jing method. It's a totally different kind of Jing. It's also Jingfa. But these are different ways of producing, like force. No, this safang means jing. You can have a lot of jing. You can have shaking jing. You can have pushing jing. You can have only knocking jing. Yeah, you have different kind of sticking jing. Also, you can have. It's also possible. Yeah, but safang means you like you spread out your complete power. Emitting. Yeah, you emitting. totally emit something into somebody's body, and this lead to collapse. <laughs> Yeah, and this is actually how the difference is um, between between the Sa Fang method and the Fa Jing. Yeah, you can see Fa Jing and Tai Chi. They can people they can push people far away or let them bounce away. Yeah, yeah. But okay. how does this relate to the Yi Jing Jing that you said? Like? Oh, okay. <laughs> if you combine that, if you have a good Jing Fa, and you combine that with Qi energy, it, it works like a multiplicator. Your energy become oh. your energy start to become nei li or nei jing oh, so internal the, force. Yeah, yeah. So actually, the yi jing you like you develop the force more, so you can like it multiplies the effects of the emit, emitting because you have built it up. The, you must first know that before you practice yi jing jing, you must first learn the bat wan jing, and bat wan jing is actually. Uh, pulling and uh, stretching your muscles and tendons and uh, uh, e relaxing your joints and, like and your structure. Like the, like the 12 movements of the Buddhist Qigong is one Bad yeah. Wanjing exercise or a, a different kind of, we will say like the Honga people, they have their iron wire form, is also very related to Bad Wanjing. Okay, And then we have also a different kind of styles, for example, praying mantis, the southern style, where they practice their specific form called sanzan. Sanzan means three warrior steps. Actually, in the uh, southern southern martial art, much more, uh, much more uh, taught, I will say. Okay, 
And for example, Uzu churn, they have all the Sun Zan method in the Lohan churn, even in the in the Baihe churn, yeah? and also in the Taitu churn. So actually, all internal uh, Southern styles they have also their breathing technique, yeah. also related to the Baduan Jing. But the Yi Jing Jing is a totally different thing. Before you practice the Yi Jing Jing, you must first learn to stretch and pull the tendons, combine that with breathing techniques, and energize your body in yeah. the Bad Wan Jing. After that, <coughs> you come to the Yi Jing Jing. So we just arrived here, this is the Uguan. We came with a scooter. Uguan means basically the martial hall. So the master has his classes here, uh, teaching his students. There's all the hardening equipments there. Uh, basically all sort of gym equipment. So we're actually waiting the master. I think he's, he's about to come there with the, with the car. We're gonna uh, carry some stuff upstairs and we're gonna have uh, some training there. Gonna film some, some stuff. For the courses, maybe some harding material or some forms, it's gonna be really interesting stuff. So we're gonna go. This is the Kung Fu. Pumping up. Pumping up. <laughs> Teach you now. <laughs> <laughs> Have some fun, yeah? You must, uh, yeah, yeah, come. So, eight elbows. Yeah. Eight. And then the nine. Nine. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. And up and turn. Other direction. So look, you can do like this, yeah? and you can grab like that, yeah? and actually you are here, and then you can give up and grab here in the lower part. Yeah? And if you, for example, everything what you can do in Wing Chun movement, you can use the same technique in actually a monkey move, yeah? like that, or even here. And that. Yeah? This is an elbow break, yeah? a hook and a grab. Yeah? And when I go from here, I'm here. That's it. So in uh, like martial arts, you know, usually you need to have a, if you want to like kick higher, you need to have, of course, flexible hips. And for example, uh, this man here is very strong, but he lacks a little bit of flexibility and he has a hard time like kicking to like head height. He can maybe kick like the front kick, but the side kick can't really lift it up there. And there's a uh, problem. And sometimes the stretching, like I said to him, like the stretching is good, but if you have very weak musculature, it's not very, it's not so useful. 
So you need to have, make sure that you have even the basic amount of strength in the normal articulations. And this move, which I show, is one of my favorites, which is also in the idea of mobility class, uh, you can do so. First, you raise the legs here, and then you just spread them out like this way. And put the lower back and buttocks on the floor. So as you can see already from here, normally you would be able to even bring it higher up here through your muscular force, actually. So when you keep the lower back on the floor, you get a very honest feedback from your body of the state of your actual mobility to bring the legs forward. So if you watch me from the side, when I do this, they're not here, my legs, but bring them more towards my body. I can really straighten the, the quadriceps. So before you actually, you can keep still, keep it. You can already see that it's very hard. This is good. This is what we want, actually, because here this is shaking and also the knees are not as straight, and this is fine, this is a good progression. But we want to actually develop the strength in the groin area and in the quadriceps, not just by passively stretching, which is good and you need it, but it, won't, it will not do a lot of good if you really have poor muscular control. So this, you, now you can bend the knee, bend the knee, but you bend here and bring up, bring up, bring up. Yes, hold, hold here, spread, and this, 90 degrees, yes. So now if it goes very hard, then you just uh, bend the knees and you get the legs closer. So this is already a good way to actually continue this movement. But so the, the really the main point is that also work those muscles and create a connection. Don't just passively stretch and pull and yank yourself to different directions. That only can create more tightness, uh, more discomfort, more pain, even pinching in the hips. And I had a lot of these issues myself. I had to condition my hips from the beginning and they're still not perfect. But I needed to do this and go through this process where I just kind of like went through every articulation. This is just one of the many that actually you can train in athlete tunics. There's a multiple more articulations, but there's even more than things that you need to condition. But so, how are you feeling? Oh, it's very tired. Very tired, yeah. Yes. That's good, you can relax. Oh, six. Yes, so you feel the, the, this groin? Yes. Yeah. This is this is how to start. <laughs> yes, it's burning. It's burning. It's but burning. you can now try to kick. You can now stand up. And you can now try to throw a kick or something. It's not like suddenly magically much better. But there should be a certain feeling of. Do you feel better? It's higher. It's higher. Yes, it's higher. Exactly. And we did it before. Yeah. Why do that? Yeah, yeah, because I, I followed like when you do this before, it's like you need to go a little bit this way. Yes. But now you open the screw and you actually you tell your muscles it's safe to do this thing, it's safe yes. to condition. So you can do this every yes, day. It's very useful. Very, very useful, useful, yeah. Yes. Exactly. So that's how to start conditioning your hips for kicks. <laughs> Our days with the master were full of filming. There were hours and hours of detailed theory and practice, all carefully recorded to present the art in its full richness. We delved into the most enshrined methods of internal Qigong. Jiang Yushan showed us the surprising fighting applications of each artful and intriguing technique, without forgetting the body hardening methods. All the knowledge to become a refined martial artist. Easy. Shirt no, but you sweat easier like Yeah, and yeah. uh, many times the small is harder than the yeah. big. Uh, if I sweat here, it's okay, but I sweat everywhere. Yeah, it's really hard to see actually like, what you do. Uh, now, if you have a little bit some insight about what I'm doing, then you, you can figure out uh, there is something inside. Yeah. So yeah. people, they know a little bit much more. They see, even when I do some this kind of movement, they already... <laughs> No, like this, you know? It's not, it's not like the other guys, they say, hey, what kind of weird move if you think this is Kung Fu, you know? They only see the outer frame. They don't know what is the internal behind it. 
so the outer frame is easier to copy for, for someone who can copy that. Yeah. But uh, the internal is a totally different case. Please take it off. Today is fish day. So today is fish day, no? Okay. So I have here the delicious fish. This is actually breakfast. After a hard workout in the morning, you can have a delicious breakfast. And this is quite okay. Fantastic. That's good. That's good, yeah? Yeah, you like that? Like that? Did you try that? Uh, which one? This one. I didn't try the package, but this one was really good. This maybe he can give you something. Oh, that was maybe he share with I you. Yeah, I love cabbage. What do you think about this? It's okay. okay. I also like that there's like different sides because the area where uh, the river was like, I don't know, I really like so people. I was used to like everything the same, but then there's all the You said you want to write something. Nothing, no? It's clear. Okay. No, we, we need to we need to consider about why we are doing this. Why we are doing this. We will say it is actually a gift for the human society. We okay? These kind of methods, of course, they are good to learn. If you, if you want to develop yourself, you want to become a better human, you need to learn that. Because healthy mind, conscious mind, yeah, uh, spirit, vitality, everything is inside. Yeah. It's not only fighting each other in the cage, not only like that. No? And after that, what comes then? Only injuries and a lot of conflict. No. Always to say who is better than the others. No? I so think it just gives it gives a lot of new opportunities for people to to develop their physical physicality also. Just Not skills. only that, if somebody really loves Kung Fu because of reading the books and seeing the movies, now finally they can learn something what is really uh, fun. <laughs> Okay, it is really fun to learn something new because we need to progress and we need to, uh, uh, our mind needs to be occupied with something beautiful <laughs> and not only negativity. Yeah, but this is what I mean, like it, it keeps people something that they can actually focus on that is like productive and it gives yeah. them up. Like yes. It's so many tools that you can utilize wherever you are and I think this is great. So actually when you learn Qigong, you don't want to learn to fight. Maybe you know already how to fight. You only want to move a little bit Kung Fu. Kung Fu, you want to have a little bit Kung Fu. You know, it's also beautiful, no? I only can say that. It's also a very beautiful way to do exercise. Okay. And where you can actually also uh, conduct your speed yeah, and manner, how you perform each kind of sequence. And when you learn all these kind of Kung Fu forms, even whatever it is, it only helps to stretch the body, to make the frame stable and solid. When I, when I say frame, <coughs> the body frame. Yeah. And also uh, develop a different kind of mindset. Okay, That you don't easily give up. When you learn, when you complete already a complete, uh, learn a form, for example, it takes first time, okay? And when you only do halfway, you will never reach your goal. This kind of attitude you will carry all your lifetime. And when you complete a kind of Kung Fu set, for example, you have a small achievement. I remember when I learned my Kung, first Kung Fu set, I was so happy that day, <laughs> only to receive the last three techniques. Yeah. And then when the message, okay, thank you. That's the form. Huh? That's the form? I was shocking, you know, like happy at the same time. 
and then when you when you when you practice your martial kung fu form you, uh, you can boost yourself in a totally different uh, zone inside okay and when you practice mo monkey kung fu then you can Im imagine yourself as the monkey king like that yes have fun okay that's also not bad the mindset is different yeah there's a lot of a lot of sides to it Little bit warmer. What I have here? Yeah. What's in the box? The vests. Vests? Yes. Oh no. I've yeah. been waiting for that actually. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. I just ordered and all right just on time. So the vests. And maybe okay. it's your size. The meaning is good. It's Huang Lao Ye. Huang is what? Huang, Huang San, yeah, is emperor. Uh -huh. And Lao Ye is the elder, it's actually the boss. So this says emperor. Yeah, e emperor, uh, elder emperor is actually the big boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I award you the first black belt degree in Qigong and art of self defense because of the big effort. And also I wish you good development in the future martial art way of life and also in your fitness area. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, and here is the diploma. In total, we spent seven weeks in Taiwan. It was an eventful and challenging trip from the confines of the quarantine to the glamour of Taipei. In between, we managed to film an enormous amount of footage that we hope will eventually enrich the lives of many. What you have seen here is just a tiny fraction. Soon, the doors will open once again for all who are willing to master the original art of ancient Qigong.